We've had, you know, sort of this, all sorts of happenings in the Treasury market. We've been yeah. above five, we've been below four, but we're hanging out now in sort of the 420 to 430 yeah. area. Is that where we're happy for a long time to come? Well, I think there's some consolidation happening, Vonnie. That, that, that's true. I mean, it's, it seems quite boring after all the other stuff you've just presented. So I saw a, an S&P 500 chart just going all the way up since October. So I guess if we knew that was the case back in October, then we wouldn't bother touching bonds at all. They're, they're really quite boring. The, the role of the bond is to give some diversification. And with a forehandle on 10-year yields, it seems to me actually probably to be too high. Now, if we could just take a step back and think about where we're going to be in a year's time, rather than, than just this week, because I, th I think the tendency is just to look at the here and now all the time. The, the fair value is probably nearer to three than it is to five, for example. And, the, and you know, I, I, would, I would take that view looking through the next auction, the next PCE release, and, and, and have a more global picture. Think of, think, think of what's happening in China and in Japan and thinking about the disinflation pressure that's coming from elsewhere. You know, how exceptional can the U.S. continue to be? So, so you know, to your point, 420 to 430 seems like a, like a good entry point. Obviously, it would have been better to buy a few months ago, but, but uh, uh, I, I, th I think the value, the value is looking to be quite good. And Stephen, this is Jennifer in Johannesburg. In your latest report, you talk about Hi. how directionally yields are sort of being wagged around, tail wagging is sort of how you put it. I mean, what would you yeah. say is really the, the, the key driver of where yields are going right now, especially considering uh, what you point out in your yeah. report? Yeah, so I refer to tail wagging the dog, which of course is impossible yeah. and not a very nice thought either, really. But, but the, the, um, the, the, the concept is to try and reverse the causality, really, because we think that there's a, there's a central valuation, a kind of baseline, which I think is nearer to three. Just look at what the Federal Reserve says. It says that it's going to be cutting rates this year and next and go down eventually to two and a half. So if I say three it can't be that far away from the baseline that they're indicating. Um, to, to me, the, the right-hand tail of the distribution is, is pulling quite hard. And you hear people, people even talking about rate hikes. That, that, was, that was going across the screens last week. Mm. I mean, it, it's a small probability, but it would have a big impact. That's the point of tail risk. And I think the usual suspects are fiscal policy, so lots of supply. Um, inflation taking off again. Well, we've had one, one month. And, and I put it into the global perspective. And then there's the, the, the geopolitics, which I, which I think everyone's got their scenarios and views about where this may go, um, thinking about the U.S. election and other things. Uh, uh, so, so, so the right tail seems to be active right now, but there is, there is this thing called the left tail. Yeah. And at some point, we might be a bit more considered. So you know, the, the salient facts are that there, there's disinflation elsewhere. Um, the, the growth has been bought from the future with loose fiscal policy. Um, one year from now, I imagine yields will be lower. You say that, though, about, um, you know, that inflation has been on the way down. I mean, yeah, we did get one month, and you were dismissing yeah. it a little bit. But we haven't seen services disinflate yeah. at all. Yeah, I don't want to be so dismissive, because that, that again, doesn't sound right. We have to respect that January was a, a strong number. And we don't know yet whether this is the start of a trend. It's, it's for, and also on services, we've had a couple of months when the jobs growth has been on an upward trend. And we know that Chair Powell is looking at that one in particular. So f fair point, Vani. Uh, but more globally, I see disinflation. So uh, China is an example. Japan is not uh, booming in terms of the inflation picture. The UK may have a one handle on inflation soon. It's been soft in Sweden, Canada. So it just seems to me that the bigger picture is, is that how exceptional is the US? That, uh, and, and I guess we're going to find out. So I would suggest that it's probably a blip. It's probably seasonal. It could well be a January effect. Uh, but we, we have to be patient. And that's what you do in bond markets. You, you can't expect instant gratification. Mm. They're supposed to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be boring. Uh, tell that to investors. Uh, Stephen, what does that mean then uh, for uh, emerging markets? I mean, are, are they then just sitting on the sidelines waiting for things to sort of play out in the U.S., yeah. or are they taking a bit of shape? Yeah. Well, the, the key input to many um, uh, analysts' uh, uh, models will be the dollar and the U.S. 10-year yield. So if it's true that the dollar is close to a peak and the 10-year yield's coming down, then that would normally be giving a bit of a tailwind to the emerging markets in general. But then if it's so obvious that you buy some of these 
markets, you know, for example, Mexico or Brazil or whatever, if you, if you were to buy these on the basis that the U.S. yield is going to go down, then you might as well buy the U.S. What we're looking for is more idiosyncratic stories. Now, India has been one of those quite consistently this last year. By that, I mean um, that the market has resisted the yield rise in the U.S. and, and even seems to have some potential to rally. Um, people have got interested in some of the stories around uh, Egypt and, and Turkey, thinking about this region recently, because they're idiosyncratic risks, that they have, they have their own independent momentum. So, so um, yeah, I, I think that in general, the picture I'm painting should be good for EM, but we have to be selective, because it's not just a simple case of buying everything. Well, you're looking at places like Poland, Hungary, Mexico, yeah. and the yeah. Czech Republic, yeah. interestingly. Yeah, remember, these were the ones that went first into the hiking cycle, so they were quite hawkish. In fact, this is an interesting point. Here we are talking about the Fed and often about the ECB, but let's just remember they're at the back of the pack. Mm -hmm. If this was a peloton, they'd be the ones lagging, trying to catch up the main group. Right? They're not leading anything. So yeah. it, it, it's true that the CE3, the Central European group, they were leading, as was LATAM. So, so um, if they were the first into the tightening, then they're getting the impact of that tightening first. And so it's quite logical that they, they're the ones who are easing. And, it, and they are high beta markets. So if you, if you buy into the idea that yields have peaked and they come, they come down, and they will come down, not everyone does, by the way, but if you buy into that, then, then CE3 could be a, a, a good way of playing it.